Uh, I'm Kinoshita from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, it's a great pleasure and a great honor for me to be uh, here, invited here, very beautiful city, St. Petersburg, and these wonderful meetings. Uh, first of all, I'd like to express my sincere appreciation for, to the uh, Professor Kalachon for kind invitations, and also I appreciate all of the staffs organizing this meeting. So in my talk, I'd like to sh shortly uh, present the current status of gastric cancer surgery in Japan. So when we look at the occurrence of gastric cancer in the world, actually half of the patients of gastric cancer occurs in East Asia, uh, strictly 45% in mainland China. And a relative high incidence is uh, recognized in uh, East and Central Europe, including Russia and in South America. But the mortality rate is decreasing due to the screening and the progress of surgical or medical treatment, but its mortality is still high in East Asian countries. Actually, it's eight times as high as that in North America. But in uh, Japan or South Korea, but North Korea, <laughs> in Japan and Korea, we have a national uh, screening system using endoscopy, so most of the patient was detected in early stage. This is a Japanese cancer statistics in 2011. In uh, uh, over 60% of the patient, a gastric cancer patient, was detected in stage one, thanks to the screening systems. So this is also the cancer statistics in Japan. But the, uh, when we look at the cancer deaths, the first, first position is uh, lung cancer now, but the second position is stomach cancer, and the third is colorectal. And the cancer incidence uh, still, for male, the stomach cancer is the first position. And for female, breast cancer is the first, but in total, in overall, the stomach cancer has the uh, um, most common incidences. But now the uh, main reason for gastric cancer occurrence, Helicobacter pylori infection rate is decreasing year by year in Japan. It's, uh, it's estimated that in 2013, it will be lower than 20% due to the, our improved sanitation, or in Japan, the Helicobacter pylori eradication therapy medication is covered by health, national health insurance systems since 2000. So it is expected that the, in the future, we will have the more number of uh, proximal gastric cancer instead of a distal, cancer, distal side gastric cancer. So in Japan, we have uh, Japan, Japanese gastric cancer treatment guidelines. The latest version is published in 2014. This uh, algorithm is uh, uh, very accurately decided. And for very early gastric cancer, ESD, e endoscopic resection, is the first choice. Otherwise. Uh, gastrectomy with D2 lymph node dissection is the first choice. But if the pathological stage was stage 2 or stage 3, adjuvant chemotherapy using S1 or Xerox is recommended. But neoadjuvant chemotherapy is not still so commonly performed in Japan. Now we are doing some clinical investigation to reveal the efficacy of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. But maybe in Europe, European countries, neoadjuvant chemotherapy is the most common treatment, I think. This is a number of laparoscopic gastrectomy performed in Japan. It's a nationwide questionnaire conducted by Japan Society of Endoscopic Surgery. 
it's a number of laparoscopic surgery is increasing year by year because the indication of laparoscopic surgery is mainly stage one cancer. We have a, a lot of stage one cancer. Now in Japan, we have a national clinical database, which means that we have to register all of the uh, surgery patients to this national clinical database. Otherwise, we cannot uh, renew or get the board certification from the academic society. So we should, it's our obligations, obligations to enter, register, or input the data of the patient. The, according to the, this national clinical database data, about 45% of gastric cancer surgery is currently done by laparoscopy in Japan now. So now the, some prospective studies concerning laparoscopic surgery, gastrectomy is uh, ongoing in Japan uh, regarding distal or total gastrectomy. And uh, most of the clinical studies are now following up time and we are waiting for the final results. And in Japan, in guidelines, only laparoscopy distal gastrectomy for clinical stage one is recommended because, uh, because of the more advanced cancer, still scientific evidence is lacking. That's why. So it's just to summarize. I have summarized the uh, current status of laparoscopic gastrectomy in Japan, including my personal opinions. Distal gastrectomy for stage one already technically established and almost spread to core hospitals in Japan. But total gastrectomy includes some more difficult parts. For example, esophagogenostomy or lymph node dissection for splenic hilar lesions. So nearly established, but now spreading to core hospitals. But to stage two or three cancers, uh, laparoscopic surgery, it's uh, still debatable regarding its accessibilities, uh, especially for node positive cancer or very large tumors. So it is done in only limited hospitals. And when we look at the LTG total gastrectomy for a very advanced cancer, it's very difficult still. So done only by expert surgeon. Still scientific evidence is lacking. So at, uh, regarding uh, uh, proximal gastric cancer, uh, one of the most uh, difficult point is uh, lymph node dissection around the splenic hilum. This uh, last year, we had a uh, final result of JCOG0110 trials, which comparing splenectomy versus non-splenectomy for non-invasion to the greater curvature proximal advanced gastric cancer. It's a randomized clinical trial. Primary endpoint was overall survival. Its final result was like this. There is no difference between a splenectomy and a non splenectomy So conclusion is splenectomy should be avoided unless the tumor involves a greater curvature line. So this uh, splenic hilar lesion is a very good candidate for laparoscopic surgery because it's a deep, uh, deep operative field. It's a very uh, well acceptable from this uh, laparoscopic view, for, but there is a remarkable anatomical diversity or variation in a splenic hilum area. So we think that the preoperative 3D CT simulation is very effective to understand the anatomical structures before surgery. So let me show you the laparoscopic splenic hilar dissection. Can, can you? It's okay? Okay. So, you know, I'm approaching to the splenic hilar lesions. Now I'm exposing the lower branch of splenic artery and veins, and now left gastroepiploic artery and veins 
uh, cut, clip and cut. Now I'm using the energy device as a Thunderbeat. It's a product of Olympus Company Japan. Well, this device is, now I am dissecting number 11 along, uh, along the splenic artery. Uh, now you can see the left gastric best, uh, veins. Now uh, left gastric artery uh, gripped and div divided. This patient has an advanced gastric cancer at the EG junction. Uh, this is a splenic artery. I ordered the assistant to hold the nerve tissues running along the splenic artery, and now I'm going to the splenic hilar lesions. So you can see here is uh, number 10 lymph nodes station. The, of course, when we preserve the spleen, we cannot, uh, it's very difficult to remove the number 10 lymph node, posterior side lymph node at the splenic hilum, but it's enough when the tumor does not invade the greater curvature site, according to the final result of JCOG trials. It's a compression images after splenectomy. This is another case, splenectomy, because the tumor is located on the greater curvature site. The principle is safe, uh, same. I am now uh, mobilizing the pancreas tail at the same time the spring and the abdominal esophagus is divided in advance before splenectomy. And I am now uh, dissecting the brain just in front of the gelota fascia. And uh, I am now approaching to the splenic hilum. So in this case, I am going to perform splenectomy. So I am I have already checked the anatomy around here before surgery using 3D CT simulations. So already I have decided at this, which point we should divide the splenic artery and the splenic veins. Now the splenic vein is divided and the specimen is uh, placed as a nylonberg. And this is a compression after splenectomy for tumors invading greater curvature. It's okay? So next topic is anastomosis. In total gastrectomy, uh, esophageal jejunostomy is better, still very challenging parts for most of the surgeon, even for skilled surgeons. I prefer to perform linear staple root, side-to-side anastomosis overlap method, which was originally developed by Professor Uyama, very famous surgeon in Japan. So let me show you these procedures. Okay, so already the abdominal esophagus is uh, exposed and uh, using the intinocalming, dyeing, uh, dyeing materials, anterior aspect of the abdominal esophagus is marked and esophagus was uh, uh, divided in anterior, posterior directions. The specimen is uh, extracted now using the gastric tube inserted from the mouth. Now the gastric tube is uh, introduced into the peritoneal cavity. I am using the echelon uh, 60, but use only the 40 millimeter lengths in length. It's a gastric tube is very uh, important to avoid uh, misinsertion to the submucosal layers. And uh, this is a side to side anastomosis, esophageal jejunostomy using the endoscopic linear stapler, and this hole is closed using intracorporeal suturing techniques using the monofilament thread. So in the original uh, procedures developed by Professor Uyama, he closed this hole using extracorporeal knotting uh, techniques uh, such as uh, uh, 
extra uh, radius knot, such as a radius knot, but I prefer to perform intracorporeal uh, suturing. Uh, maybe the, it's, it seems very good. Uh, checking the uh, air leakage test. And also, we have to close the, uh, every uh, potential defect of, for internal herniation because in uh, laparoscopic surgery, adhesion after surgery is very few, therefore the internal herniation is likely to occur. And the uh, jejunal stamp is uh, fixed to prevent torsion of the jejunal rim. I prefer to perform anticoric, anticoric loot because it's uh, simpler than lateral loot. Okay. So uh, let's move to the topics of Da Vinci surgery. Now, uh, in Japan, over 200 Da Vinci instruments are already installed. The number of Da Vinci surgery in Japan is increasing year by year, but most of the surgery is urological surgery for prostate resection. Still, GI surgery done by Da Vinci is very rare. Still, it's very debatable whether the Da Vinci is really beneficial for the patient with gastric cancer because of the very expensive price and uh, necess necessity of a longer operation time. So now we are doing uh, prospective studies. Uh, the primary endpoint is morbidity rate. At the PI is Professor Uyama. So let me show you my procedure of Da Vinci surgery. I use the uh, Da Vinci SI, not the latest model, but the uh, one, one former model. I use a uh, harmonic device, but you know the harmonic device cannot be articulated, always straight, so it is uh, not a perfect device for Da Vinci systems. This is a number six lymph node dissection. Well, I can do, I can do D2 dissection or anastomosis using Da Vinci, but still it takes a longer time than conventional laparoscopic surgery. And uh, it's just in my personal opinion, maybe the, now the latest model of Da Vinci systems is not so perfect one. I think in the future, maybe the more compact or more reasonable price uh, robotic systems will be uh, developed or launched in the world, then we can uh, expand the indication of the Da Vinci surgery, I think. So you know this is the number 12A lymph node. You can see the portal vein and the common hepatic artery. Yes, it's very nice. Uh, we can perform very precise and meticulous surgery using Da Vinci because uh, there is no tremor at the tip of the instrument, and the operative field is very stable. There are many advantages of Da Vinci surgery, but we should consider uh, for further uh, expansion of indication in the future. So this is my conclusion. What are required for modern gastric cancer surgery? For treat or for cure the gastric cancer in the patient. Now it's a local control combined with a systemic chemotherapy is mandatory, I think. So once we have a morbidity or complications, we cannot smoothly shift to the adjuvant chemotherapy. It's not so good for the patient. So for surgeons, we should reduce the morbidity rate. It's definitely, we should reduce the morbidity rate but at the same time, we should maintain the local control, R0 resection using D2 dissection. I think this uh, risk of mobility and the uh, perfect local control, this balance is very important in modern gastric cancer surgeries. 
This is my son and the daughter. Thank you for your kind attention. Uh, do you, could you use this okay. one? Okay. Dear colleagues, while Professor is taking the uh, device for translation, so I should say we have time to ask questions. Uh, thanks a lot for this bright, uh, very interesting presentation. So I ask the audience if there are any questions to you. So there is a question, just a second. Uh, could you tell me, please, what you think about the Nakayama surgery? Nakayama surgery. What do you think about it? And at the same time, uh, Nakayama surgery uh, plus uh, pylorus, uh, plus uh, uh, pylorus retaining gastrectomy. What do you think about such uh, surgery? That's the first question. Second question. There is a point of view uh, that uh, pyloric. Uh, no, no. Uh, helicobacter pylori. Is that about the microbes? Is make helicobacter pylori? Is that uh, eradication of helicobacter pylori is uh, considered to be as a provocation and uh, a kind of a uh, precondition for gastric cancer? There is such a point of view. And James White, a Nobel uh, Award a person, he thinks that in case of adenocarcinoma, target chemotherapy is going in the wrong direction. Uh, so it's more of a financial issues than of, so to say, medical one. What do you think about that? That's the second question. Okay, first question, Nakayama surgery. Nakayama surgery. I, I, I cannot understand what, what kind of surgery. Nakayama think, is a Nakayama Kome. I think, I, I think it is double track reconstruction. A double track. Double track. Double, two. double track uh, surgery, uh, reconstruction, I perform for after proximal gastrectomy. Because uh, my, our indication of the proximal gastrectomy is a uh, stage one cancer located on the upper side of the stomach. It's very nice. And uh, usually I place the 10, 10 centimeter jejunum for between the esophageal jejunostomy and the gastrojejunostomy, and it, which can be done by the laparoscopy now. I have already the over 100 experiences. It's very nice procedures, and uh, it's a very common procedure in Japan. And the second question is a uh, helicobacter pylori eradication. It's uh, it definitely maybe the uh, helicobacter pylori infection is the main reason of gastric cancer occurrence. It's features already approved by the scientific uh, uh, studies, I think. It's, uh, it is. Uh, now in Japan, its eradication is uh, covered by national health insurance systems, but also, but of course, it's impossible to do this treatment for the all of the population. Of course, this indication is uh, the patient who has a gastric ulcer or very severe chronic gastritis. For such patients, this uh, coverage of the health insurance system is upright. Спасибо.